हेलो वी हेयर इन ऑरलैंडो आई हैव विद मी डॉक्टर जेम्स गोल्डस्टीन फ्रॉम बॉमन डॉक्टर गैरी टेरनी फ्रॉम एमजीएच डॉक्टर टॉम स्टकी फ्रॉम ग्रीनसबर्ग नॉर्थ कैरोलिना एंड दिस इज शेली गोल्डबर्ग फ्रॉम फिलाडेल्फिया पेंसिल्वेनिया सो वेलकम थैंक यू वेरी मच and uh, it's a great pleasure being with you now so we have a bit of interesting case today my i have my colleagues dr shamsundar reddy with me and dr shiv prasad who is going to be on the ocity and our scrub nurse aruna and our chief technicians they are around with me so dr sham will introduce the case for you hi uh, uh, thanks for giving us this uh, opportunity i would like to go with the case so we have a 60 year old gentleman he is only hypertensive and he is a family history of coronary artery disease his his uh, brother at an early age had a uh, similar history and underwent angioplasty okay now he presented with symptoms of history of effort angina class 2 which gradually progressed he was evaluated outside where treadmill done was strongly positive subsequently symptoms progressed he was having intermittent rest angina so when he presented uh, the ecg sh was showing intermittent rbb with lafb incomplete rbb with lafb and there were some dynamic changes in the anterior and the lateral leads so echo done was normal so we put it as unstable angina we took him for an angiogram subsequently next slide please so these are the ecgs probably we can see so dynamic changes which in incomplete rbb lafb with st depressions in the v1 to v6 and also in the 1 and avl next slide ecg after giving heparin clexane uh, he's it's slightly better next please go to the angiogram please inshal angiogram angio. angio please go to the disc yes. yeah so so we did a coronary angiogram the left uh, injection showed a distal left main um, suggestive of some disease the circumflex as an uh, significant uh disease it's an eccentric more than 70 to 80% stenosis next slide please next yeah so you can see uh, at the origin of the lad ostium there is some little bit of haziness suggesting of some left main disease and uh, mid uh, we can say the proximal it's pretty okay at around just before the diagonal we have a moderate size disease and after in the mid part we can see a significant disease eccentric at more than 70 to 80% uh, stenosis next please so interesting in the lao cranial please freeze lao cranial yeah so when we see in the lao cranial the ostium uh, the lad ostium really looks uh, significantly stenotic probably this we could see in only in this view next view please lao caudal lot of overlap really we can't assess the uh, lad go to the rca please rca as a significant mid to distal long segment disease with critical stenosis next please yeah breathe freeze so probably you can say tight stenosis in the rca so he had a we can say that distal left main with critical triple vessel disease so the options initially of post coronary bypass surgery and stenting were discussed with the patient some of they were reluctant for the bypass surgery so they want want to go for the stenting so i want to dr ravi i want to discuss the uh, pathway or the uh, what would be the strategy for this sort of patients so hope you had a good view of the angiograph views yeah so once the strategy has been discussed the patient i mean we uh, the patient uh, prefer to go for a pci triple vessel pci um i'm uh, doing the pci to the rca as well as lcx was straight forward but the thing is the pci to the led that was we would like to show the oct film what we have done is we have uh, done as a stage procedure we have done the stenting to the rca with one single stent of 48 mm covering the mid to distal rca and also we have finished the stenting of the circumflex that was more than 48 hours before and at the same time we have done the oct uh, to assess the significance of the led plaque which was very eccentric showing in only lao cranial view and the distal left main showing some disease whether something has to be done to the ostium of the led and left main that was the main uh, dilemma so we went ahead and did the oct and i would like to show the oct film for you over to dr shiv prasad for the dr shiv prasad please hello can you see the oct on the screen 
So where is this now? Yeah. Which vessel? You're the LAD? Yeah. yeah. So okay. that's on the screen is the uh, LAD. Essentially, we have done the OCT run from mid LAD back into the left main. The predominant area of interest was Austin LAD, where I'm not sure whether you had a good look at that ostium where there was a hazy uh, a hazy, opa hazy uh, lesion on the ostium so we weren't quite sure whether that hazy lesion whether it's a calcified oh. or uh, is it a yeah. thrombus Show the LED. or ulcerated block so the run you are going to see now no, we, uh, yes we, we have a couple of questions uh, first uh, yeah what did you do a fractional flow reserve measurement on any of these vessels? Yes, and, FFR uh, has been done. What's your uh, opinion of that uh, distal left main uh, bifurcation? Yes, the FFR of LED has been 0.71, and uh, we pulled back the uh, wire and we assessed the proximal lesion also, which came to 0.82. And uh, the basically, I mean, it's a diffuse disease from the ostium to the proximal, and there has been a bit of normal segment bef between the diagonal and the septal, as you can see. And then, pro again, it, uh, another eccentric hazy lesion in the mid LED, and the LED. FFR, resting yeah. FFR itself was 0 0.71. So that's been the scene. And coming back to the OCT. Well, well, what was your overall strategy in the case? What? So basically, what, what were you going to attempt? Uh, what, what was your plan for revascularizing this patient with multivessel coronary disease? Yes. So uh, I, uh, OCT images actually had shown some. There is a significant subcutaneous in the ostium. If you can show the ostium. Should I just uh, show you the yeah, OCT pictures? Yeah, with the OCT. Then I'll discuss the plan that uh, we okay. have been. So, if we run from a, just run the pictures. So what you're seeing on the screen is from middle lady. You can see with the calcified uh, uh, some calcification uh, just go forward yeah. and we are coming to proximal lady please go please go go go, for go forward and there is some more calcification and the proximal lady shortly you'll be seeing no. a significant stenosis Yeah, yeah. It's yes. around the uh, MLA was 2.1 and the <coughs> minimum diameter was 1.64 millimeters forward. And then we can see the ostium of the circ neck forward, please. And, and you can see in this view clearly ostium of the left circumflexes is free of any significant disease. Forward, please. And this point, you can see there is a discontinuation in the intima with the appearance of cavity, although it's not completely convincing for acute block rupture or any thrombus formation, but this raised the suspicion whether uh, has he had any block rupture at some point in the past, and which is not quite clear. But what we know for sure is there is a discontinuation of the intima and there is a cavity formation and that this lesion is corresponding with the angiographic appearance of uh, haziness. haziness on ostilla lady. And if you go back, just forward please. And angiographically left main was a bit of plog disease and that's compatible with the old CD pictures. And there was a bit of plog. Uh, apart from that, the left main looks reasonably okay with the and a bit calcification. But apart from that, no uh, significant stenosis in left main. Back to Dr. Ravi. Thank you, Dr. Shiv. So at this stage, actually what uh, we have thought of is uh, probably, I mean, we are LED ostium also showing a significant plaque burden there with the distal left main being hazy and a bit of a suspicious plaque rupture there and all that. Probably what we thought was probably we should be doing is sending from the left main into the LED. And uh, uh, what we have done is show the mid LED. So before we came live, what we have done is we have done the middle LED pre dilatation Go forward. Yes, yeah. yes, next. Next. Next, 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 next. Next. So, and after the pre dilatation of the middle LED, we stented the middle LED. 
This was the 2.75 into 28 millimeters Next. Zion stent. Next. So I would like to take a film now. Okay. Fill So now you can see the middle lid is absolutely clear. This is after post dilating with a three balloon there. And what we are left with now is the proximal LED disease, the ostium and the distal left main. So now the basically, so what does the panel feel like? Tom, what would you do at this point? Pardon me? No, what would you do at this point? So I just wanted to find out maybe, I, I, my plan is I to go ahead, yeah, yeah my, I, would. I would like to, what I would like to do is go ahead, put a stent from the distal left main, probably mid shaft of the left main up to the diagonal, just leave that segment between the diagonal and the septal, which is very, I mean, very mild disease that is seen there. So not going to overlap the stent and put a stent from the distal left main into up to the diagonal and then just do a stenting and optimize the result, then then do a OCT and see if the uh, distal left main, the sub, there's any significant plaque shift into the LCX and do a kissing balloon angioplasty. Provisional. Yeah, would you like to go with a provisional T stenting? Second wire. So, what are your views? Yeah, so this is a so I thought I'd agree with the strategy too, although I'd probably be inclined to really cover the whole area, go for a long stand and then pot it in the, uh, in the main stand. Yeah. Yeah, initially, uh, actually, that was the plan originally before we <laughs> went ahead with the procedure to cover up, up to the mid, st mid LED stent up to the proximal LED. But I found that the disease, uh, more, not much of significant disease between the diagonal and septal, and I didn't want to compromise the diagonal there, which is quite uh, fair sized. So the reason is that maybe I can just not, my stent not extending up to the diagonal, probably if I can land it there, probably I can get it out. Hello, Cordell. Jim, what do you think about leaving the skip area there in the uh, left anterior descending between stands? I, I must say, I would uh, I would be inclined to cover the whole uh, cover the whole area, and I might put a wire in that diagonal to uh, protect it as well because it's uh, fairly it's not the biggest, but it does have some fair size to it, and uh, I'm always hesitant to leave little skip areas uh, like that. Yes, for my camera, I'm just going to wire the circumflex. Yeah, yeah. I think in cases like this, um, depends on how we put the question. Which would you like, surgery or uh, or uh, stenting? And uh, uh, I think the distal vessels here look so beautiful. So that's always a uh, okay. and has great targets for uh, coronary bypass surgery. So it's always always a question. Yeah, that uh, uh, that option of going for the bypass surgery has been discussed with the patient, and uh, he has opted for a triple vessel PCA. Yeah. So initially, the plan yeah. was not to well, touch the left vein. Another approach we've taken recently. Uh, another approach we've taken recently is to do a hybrid procedure, which is uh, lemus and left anterior descending, and revascularize the uh, other vessels with uh, stent technology, maybe utilizing the best of both worlds. Uh, any thoughts of uh, a hybrid approach here? Mm -hmm. Sorry, the balloon, three. three. So I would dilate the left uh, LED ostium and uh, because I don't, I'm going to take a long stent from the left main into the, up to the diagonal. So I would like to dilate the ostium also and take the stent in. Yes. First. While you're working there, I don't want to distract you, but uh, is the patient's renal function uh, adequate? And uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I may have missed it. Is the patient diabetic? Yeah, his renal parameters are uh, normal, and his LV function is normal. Otherwise, he is not uh, any other comorbid except, except for hypertension, which I've been having for the last few years. 
uh, he's not a diabetic patient. Small test. Uh, yeah, so my wire uh, has intertwined. So I have a question on the panel. So what about long-term man medical management of this patient? What would be your idea? Is there uh, duration of you land at least therapy? Well, uh, I think that's a great question. There have been so many studies with conflicting results about duration of antiplatelet therapy, and I always right. try to yes. balance the uh, bleeding no risk with the uh, Small uh, test. risk with the sequelae of the thrombosis. And for patients where I'm spending uh, multi vessels, left main, bifurcation stents, multiple layers of metal, I try to leave those patients on uh, almost lifelong dual antiplatelet therapy unless there's a major reason to discontinue it. And uh, I, I think that's an important uh, consideration to take into account before you do these procedures because if you have a patient with substantial bleeding risk where there may be premature discontinuation of dual antiplatelet therapy, that pushes me more towards surgery uh, as well because these vessels are connected to Can patients and patients have many other comorbidities and uh, I think that's an important judgment issue. So. Uh, one year for you know for somebody with a big right coronary and I put a stent in and I've got a great result. I think one year is fine. I do Why, please, therapy yeah. in uh, patients with uh, high risk for thrombosis and high uh, sequelae of a thrombotic event. I try to leave them on for uh, as long as they can. And I always tell patients before somebody tells you to interrupt that do a little therapy, call me and take it every day because your life depends on it. Uh, Jim, any? Uh, I agree with all those comments with regard to prolonged dual antiplatelet therapy with regard sense. to the stents. But I'm, I'm even more of an advocate of lifelong dual antiplatelet therapy for the future plaque that's going to be a problem. Okay. When the plaque ruptures in three, four, five years, uh, if your blood is non-thrombotic, you've got a much better chance of coming in with an ACS versus a STEMI. So again, if the patients are tolerating it, um, I, I try to hang in there, and I think there's accumulating data uh, now, especially with some of the Tychagador data, that, that long-term dual antiplatelet therapy uh, may reduce future events, not from the stent, but from other plaques elsewhere. Yeah, so I, I mean, in principle, I, I agree on the statement of dual therapy. I would challenge you a little bit and say, okay, I think in uh, the future there, there is a lot of room also for other forms of dual therapy, as, uh, as I brought up the so contact three and, uh, and uh, so I'm increasingly I'm thinking patients with an ACS coming that probably also have an, uh, a reduced rejection yeah, fraction of actually starting out with an hmm. uh, uh, scheme and then moving to a composite scheme. <laughs> So I'm going ahead with the... Uh, we just finished enrollment in uh, Twilight, which is going to be high-risk patients with, uh, you know, Tychagular monotherapy after three months, which might be an alternative to... Uh, we'll see. That's the uh, power to that end point. Yeah. Yes, please. So we just had a little discussion here in Orlando about uh, the duration of the therapy, and I just wonder what your thinking is on this particular patient. Yeah, he is on prosugrel, ecosprin and prosugrel. So off late we have been using uh, ticagrelor and prosugrel, and especially in diabetic patients, we it's been our routine practice to give prosugrel. And in ACS patients, we always go with ticagrelor. Duration of and duration, one year we continue that and after that probably we switch over to a single antiplatelet or in some patients whom we think that uh, probably there are no absolute contraindications of bleeding or anything like that, if they are not at any bleeding risk, then probably we may continue clopidogrel and uh, ecosprint combination after one year. But lifetime dual antiplatelet. Pardon me? Yeah, small test. Connect. What percentage of your cases of complex intervention 
are being done radially. Yeah, we our routine practice is doing a radial procedures. So more than 95% of the cases we do routine. I mean the bifurcations also we do the radial procedure only. Come here. So take one cine here. Okay, just. Just like to see where am I in the left main. Yeah, go to cranial view, are you cranial? I can go a little forward up to the diagonal. Small test. Three more. Okay. Small test. Yes. Sini. We'll come back a little, just don't want to pinch the diagonal ostium. Small test. So what question I was wondering, in those OCT pictures, if I remember correctly, we also saw another segment disease in the main stem, Small stack, test. Right? Or, uh, or it was actually only on the left main, mild yes. block disease. The question right. is, should we cover this further up? Well, go up. On the OCT, what we have seen was essentially mild block disease, and uh, based on the OCT pictures, yeah. we didn't feel mm -hmm. uh, we have yeah, to cover all back into the left main ostium. Okay. Deflate. Yeah, give me a 3.5 balloon, 3.5 into 12. What is the size of this stent, I'm sorry? It's 3 into 33. Zion stent. So uh, we're just uh, talking about sizing of stents, uh, left main, these, etc sizable uh, vessel. So I wonder what your target is for uh, uh, achieving uh, adequate apposition and how are you going to measure that uh, after you uh, implant the stent? Yeah, what I would like to do now is uh, post dilate the left main into the ostium of the segment, ostium LED segment to 3.5 and then do an OCT and see. So it looks pretty okay. I mean the proximal LED segment everything there and in between the intervening segment the diagonal everything seems to be okay and here we will assess the circumflex ostium by OCT and before that I what I would like to do is post dilate that left main segment and into the ostial LED by with a 3.5 balloon. Wire please. Envir, envir. Years ago, the, the first uh, coronary stents up to replace the self-expanding devices, and uh, I think we're coming back to that a little bit with uh, drug-eluting self-expanding uh, devices. And uh, when we're dealing with lesions like this that uh, go from the left main to the left anterior descending, uh, with tapering the vessel from the main to the LED, uh, might be an idea that should be revived. What, what do you think? The OCT catheter is ready. Mm. Dealing with all these proximal optimization techniques, and one way to optimize is to have a self-expanding device. Yeah. You're coming to a recorder. Just going to rewire the circumflex. Before post dilating, I would always rewire the this thing so that I don't uh, fracture the wire or with high pressure dilatations. Uh, I have a question. When you, when you, I noticed that since you radio technique predominantly for uh, uh, bifurcation as well, what's your bifurcation technique of choice for the uh, this? Uh, these days uh, I go with, I mean, uh, I go with a DK crash. I found that uh, the results being promising. And my first approach is always I'm in single strength strategy. In case if I have to go ahead with a double strength strategy, I always go with a DK crash. 
Now that I have rewired the circumflex, yeah, give me a 3 5 balloon. 3 5. No, no, I'll leave a card. please. So as you're finishing up here in the uh, left main LED system, are you planning on doing the right coronary at the same sitting? Right, or are you on doing right the coronary has sitting? already been done 48 hours back. I finished the right coronary and the left circumflex. So, and at the same time, I did the OCT for the left LED, and that is when we thought that we'll go ahead with this case to, for the live this thing. Yeah, please go ahead. Yes. Deflate. Yeah, so honestly, I think it's actually a, a, a smart move to start with the right coronary artery, as, as the team did, um, just to have a good backup in case you run into trouble with the next time. Please come to our cranial. Yeah. Is the panel doing any uh, main stem procedures under um, 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 assistive houses these days? What's the opinion on this? Well, I think in this case, clearly, he has a good LV function, and uh, we haven't planned for any assist device here. Good. No. Yeah, go ahead. Strand boost, please. Good, sir. Go ahead, go ahead. 12. 8, 10, 12. Okay. 14. Hmm? Enough. 14? Yeah. Strand boost now? Yes. Deflate? I, I just wonder, in India, what percentage of patients that are that have left main and multivessel coronary disease do you think are done by uh, coronary bypass versus... Um, um, intervention. And most of the patients go for a bypass surgery, I mean, uh, but uh, off late, I mean, uh, we are giving an option of uh, triple vessel stenting if we find that the lesions are suitable and the syntax score is okay. Stent based. But still here, mm, majority of the triple vessel diseases go for bypass surgery still. Yeah, quite. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, 12 minutes. So uh, I didn't do a uh, calculation of the syntax score, but it looks like uh, a moderate, intermediate uh, kind of score to me, somewhere in the 20s, I would imagine. Uh, so do you have a heart team approach, discuss all these patients with your cardiac and so forth, or, uh, and, and by the way, did you calculate a syntax score on this, uh, on this gentleman? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think your guess 20. is right. We calculated the syntax score. It came up to 21. And uh, we do have a hot team approach where we have surgeon, and we do discuss often the best treatment strategy, taking into the account of patient uh, preferences. So as my colleague Dr. Ravi mentioned yeah. earlier, we did discuss the treatment options, both surgical and multi-vessel percutaneous approach. And uh, clearly, he's not a diabetic, and patient also opted for uh, percutaneous coronary intervention. So that's one of the rational why Hello, you pardon. go ahead and proceed. To minimize the left main uh, procedure-related complications, uh, we planned it such a way, kind of revascularize the right and circ 48 hours prior to this procedure. and. Uh, as we mentioned, his creatinine is yeah, within seems normal pretty limits. all right. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, OCT, yeah, we're, uh, going we're ahead with the OCT now. Time, but we want to thank you for a really well illustrated case. Okay. okay. Thank, you. thank you very much for giving the very much. opportunity. Uh, we'll be just going ahead with the OCT and, and then and, uh, and see if we... Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Yeah.